baby. What up, boys? It's Flash Fontanelli. Let's talk about conversation. One of the most commonly asked questions I get from students is, I don't know what to say. I get stuck in conversation. It's actually not so much about what you say, but how you say it. And listening has as much importance in conversation as actually speaking. So I'm going to give you 10 tips that you can start taking and really improving your conversation skills. But remember, conversation is all about practice. You're not going to hear this one time and go out and become a master. Shoot the shit with everybody. Talk to the old man uh, working at Walmart. Talk to the sweet old lady at the grocery store. Talk to dudes. Talk to girls you are or are not attracted to. Talk to everybody. Just practice the skill. Number one, speak in an assertive voice. When I say an assertive voice, as a singer, I know we're taught to sing from our diaphragm. Okay, speaking is no different. The drill to help you with this is when you're speaking, hold your stomach. And when you feel that in there, when you feel that vibration, you're doing it right. Keep doing it till you feel it. Up here in the throat should be a little bit of rasp, to, a little bit of raspy voice to bring out that masculinity. Now you're going to sound different than me or the next guy. Everybody has a unique voice. But you can be assertive in your own way. Number two is what I call the storytelling pause. Storytellers, great storytellers, always leave their listener hanging, hanging on to hear what the next word is going to be. They create anticipation with that pause. Number three is a different type of pause, the listening pause. What I mean by this is when you're listening, you're never going to cut her off. Never ever cut someone off when they're speaking. Instead, you're going to wait till she's finished at least two seconds before you respond. And little tip on listening. While you're listening, it always helps to nod. Now, when I say nod, I'm not talking about this approval-seeking nod. Not quick successive nods. What I'm speaking about is slow nods. What this does is shows that you're really listening and you're letting those words sink in. What does the pause do? Pausing two seconds before you respond to whatever she just said shows that you not only listened, but you're taking the time to carefully consider your words before responding. This shows that you're taking an interest in what she has to say, and people like to talk to other people who take an interest in them. Number four, emphasize certain words. You are the worst liar I have ever seen. Way more powerful than saying this in a monotone voice. You are the worst liar I have ever seen. Huge difference. It's not the words that I'm saying, it's how I'm saying it. Delivery is everything, guys. Delivery is everything in verbal communication. To make that even stronger, let's go number five, using your hands to support that emphasis. You are the worst liar I have ever seen. Makes it more powerful, more animated, more captivating. Number six is the inquisitive squint. The inquisitive squint is not an ass-kicking squint. It is, I'm interested in what you're saying, squint. Hmm, I see. Shows that you are letting the words, letting her words absorb you. Good listeners make friends very easily. All right, number seven is a very important one. Using threads to relate. In my course, we talk a lot about similarities and differences. What we're doing here is using threads. For example, she says, I was in uh, Paris last year and I picked up this necklace. So you can take one word from her sentence and run with it and start a new conversation. You were in Paris? Wow. My buddy was there last year. He said the food was amazing, blah, blah, blah. You go into a new conversation. What this shows is that Okay, maybe I haven't been to Paris, but, and if you have, that's ideal, but, but I do know a friend who has. Therefore, we are starting to build a connection, similar experiences, similar knowledge. And you can do this with all sorts of things, but you need to use those threads to either relate or to disagree. You want to disagree a little bit too, but mostly you want to relate. It's an 80 to 20 ratio. All right, number eight, using questions to elaborate. 
Now, I'm not a big question fan, although it is a normal part, uh, it is part of normal conversation that's going to happen. I prefer statements over questions. However, you can use this to your advantage whenever you get stuck. If you're one of those guys that says, I get stuck, now I don't know what to say, use these questions to make her elaborate her point. For example, say she says, thinking about quitting my job because my boss is just a pain in the ass. So you respond. So you're thinking of leaving your job just because your boss is giving you a hard time? You paraphrased her, her words, put them in question form, and threw it back at her. Now you're making her do most of the work. She's going to feel socially obligated to continue explaining. This takes the heat off of you if you're not sure what to say. And it also, also shows that you are actually want to know more, that you're interested and you want to find out more about what she's speaking of. Number nine, laughter control. Laughter control is really important. If you ever study other people, which is huge, if you want to learn social dynamics, you must study other people, not just study yourself. Laughter control. Study, for example, like a couple that's on a first date. Pay attention to who's laughing more. Whoever's laughing more is generally seeking the other person's approval. Now, I'm not saying don't laugh at all. It's important to have a sense of humor to be able to smile and to be able to laugh. However, what's your intention for laughing? If you were laughing to make her laugh, if you're laughing at your own jokes, this is very, very bad. Okay? Bad news. If you're laughing just to seek her approval, very bad. What you want to do is laugh when something is genuinely funny. Other than that, control your laughter. Number 10, the art of charm. The art of charm is a deep subject. I can go on and on about it. I'm not going to do that right now, but it's very important to have charm. Charm is all about facial expressions, smiling through the eyes, what you can do with your face. Okay? God gave all of us a face. We all have the ability to do crazy things with this face. That's what charm is, guys. That's a big part of charm. All right, this is Flash Fontanelli. Check out the website for more tips, and I will see you next time. Peace. Big pimpin', baby.